So one of the issues with someone who really starts to get into their religiosity, right, is that they've decided to make a turn in their lives. They've started to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They've started to pray more. They've started to, you know, fast more. They've left off certain sins in their lives. But they wonder, am I good enough? Is this going to be accepted? Or is it worth it, right? And so what ends up happening is that as they're becoming more literate in religious texts and the lives of great religious people or coming into contact with those people, they're wondering whether or not they're good enough. And wait, how do I actually live that type of a life? How do I actually attain that rank? Or am I doomed now? Because this seems so far off, right? I just made what I thought was a major jump in my life to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but I still feel extremely distant. And I know I'm nowhere near the ranks that are being mentioned here. And then wait a minute, they feared hypocrisy? That must mean I too am a hypocrite. Wait a minute, they were afraid of not getting into Jannah? What chance then do I have at getting into Jannah? And that's not what a timeless Quran and seerah of the Prophet is supposed to do to us. That's not why we look to the stars. We don't look to the stars to be saddened we look to the stars in awe and there is something that we take from the Sahaba of guidance, our stars, to be guided, role models. And so by doing this exercise, right, of actually looking at the traits, what are the traits and then what's a proportion that fits my life and what's a roadmap and what's a standard and what practical and meaningful steps am I going to take to adopt these traits of belief in my life and to avoid these traits of hypocrisy in my life. So someone might say, you know, I'm feeling like a hypocrite. Let me go find a lecture on YouTube about how to not feel like a hypocrite. (laughs) Or uh, I know this hadith about three signs of hypocrisy. I'm doomed unless I do away with these three signs of hypocrisy. Uh, Someone might say, well, let me just read Surah Al-Munafiqun. And just like the story of Maryam alayhi salam, is not fully encapsulated in Surah Maryam. The story of the believers, Al-Mu'minun, is not just in Surah Al-Mu'minun. The story of the hypocrites is not just in Surah Al-Munafiqun. You're just scratching the surface. And so it's not a lecture here or there. It's not a moment where you feel bad here or there. It's not simply a call to action within yourself that I'm going to start to be a better believer and less of a hypocrite. It is actually putting things in front of you and identifying the traits, identifying the process, and then identifying how you fit within that process. When I designed this course, what I did was first and foremost, think about how to introduce the entire approach. And so why is it that Allah's earliest address of the hypocrites does not use the word hypocrites? Well, you have to know when it was revealed. So with the Baqarah, you've got to know why it was revealed in that fashion. So giving an introduction to the entire concept of hypocrisy and the entire concept of belief and then the practical manifestation of both, and then the seerah behind why the Qur'an was revealed in the stages that it was, and then what that stage means to us, what that graduality of how Allah addresses how hypocrisy was appearing in Medina means to us for how hypocrisy gradually appears in our hearts and appears in our lives. The traits of belief stamp those out. And so what we do is we take a trait of belief, a trait of hypocrisy, put them against each other. And then for each and every single one of us, there's a spectrum with that particular row. Am I closer to this or closer to that? How can I get closer to this and get further away from that? So I think in the COVID era in particular, and I'm sure that people are sick of hearing about the COVID era, but we have to admit that the long standing consequences of it uh, are going to uh, probably show themselves for the rest of our lifetimes both on a societal level and on an individual level. You know, we've, we've spoken quite a bit about how people uh, have had family trouble and trouble with those that were closest to them in their lives as a result of being isolated in small homes together because now you're with a person and you're not sure that you really like that person because you're with them for so long or they don't like you so much anymore because you're with them for so long. What about ourselves? Do we, what do we, what did we learn about ourselves? What do we discover about ourselves in this, you know, isolation and seclusion that we had. And so I think even if those traits did not show themselves to us per se, there were certain vulnerabilities that made some traits, whether they were old or new, more obvious to us so that we can address. I understand that for someone who 
consumes a lot of religious lectures and content, it often doesn't make sense to say, well, why sign up for a course when I can just, you know, listen to all these lectures, right? But anyone that's attended a retreat, anyone that's actually taken a course before understands the difference between the two. The way that those concepts actually come together and with something as significant as the characteristics of the believers versus the characteristics of the hypocrites. Uh, you might get a khutbah or you might get something that you read on one of those characteristics and that will be beneficial inshallah ta'ala. In fact, of course, there will be some overlap sometimes between some of the content that I might be saying here and in a khutbah or in some other place. But to actually break things down in the way that you do in a course is very different. And so that's why I personally took so much joy in the preparation of this course and, and frankly benefited. Uh, you know, from it myself, because when you can put it all together, then you can actually line up the traits on both sides and say, all right, well, look, this is how much of this I have in my life. And this is how much of this I have in my life. I really want to be a complete manifestation of the column of belief and completely disavow the column of hypocrisy here. You don't want to be swaying between belief and hypocrisy or swaying between the traits of belief and hypocrisy, right? And sometimes we treat things, especially when it comes to spiritual illness, at a very surface level. And the way Allah addresses hypocrisy in the Qur'an is He starts from a very deep place. A very deep place. He starts from the heart. And that's how He starts to address hypocrisy uh, in Surah Al-Baqarah. So being able to actually draw that line and extrapolate properly allows you to be far more accurate in how you diagnose yourself and far more accurate in the roadmap that you then build out for yourself to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to have the traits that are more beloved to Him. So I hope that you'll register now inshallah ta'ala and I look forward to seeing you in class.